You may have your seats in his presence. Tell your neighbor, good morning. Yes, morning is a time where everything looks fresh. And I believe as you receive this word of God, that everything about you will be fresh in Jesus' name. My name is Ruth. I was born in England. And when I was growing up, I never imagined that one day I would be an evangelist here in Lagos, Nigeria, in the Synagogue Church of All Nations. If you'd have asked me during that time what I wanted to become, I would have told you something totally different. But God had his own plan. And by his amazing grace, I'm here today under my Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua. There's a Yoruba song that I love so much. It talks about the creator of the ancient hills. Who else can I give my praise? Olorun toda awon okeyibani eyini mo fe ope say but thank you Jesus you may take your seats have you ever thought what would happen if your will was always granted I mean if you always ate what you wanted if you always watched what you wanted if you always did what you felt like doing if you always slept and woke up when you wanted what would your life look like today? Just think about it for a moment. If you ate ice cream morning, afternoon and evening, what would it do to your body? Or if you always spoke out the thoughts that are in your heart, what would it do to you and those around you? In the same way, if your prayer for a better condition had been answered earlier, where would you be today? most probably you would not be in the house of God. You see, we can only destroy ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. Because where we look, where our hearts look, is often where we don't want to look. We may have stopped our bad habits on the outside, but for many of us, our hearts still yearn for them. What we want, what we desire, is most times not the will of God for us. Do you know that? Even what we want or desire, many times it's against even our own better judgment. But there's an unseen force driving us. 
we are misled by our senses. The more we see, the more we hear, the more we touch, the more we taste, the more we feel, the more we enjoy, the more we want. A Christian is called to do what is right, even though it's contrary to what he naturally wants to do. But urge for what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, has caused us to act out of character as children of God. To truly do God's will, we first have to let go of our own. Since the Garden of Eden, man has been given the right to choose between good and evil, between right and wrong, between our will and the will of God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus fought and conquered the greatest battle in the history of humankind, the battle of our will. In that moment, Jesus could have let that cup of suffering pass from him. He could have called down angels to deliver him from being crucified. He could have come down from the cross unhurt, but our Savior knew that sometimes we have to do what we hate in order to create something we love. He let go of his desire and will. People of God, when you let go of yourself, you let God in. And then his strength becomes your strength. His joy becomes your joy. And his way becomes your way. This will bring us to our message, let go. Tell your neighbor, let go. I can't hear you. And what are you, let, what are you letting go of? Your desire and your will. In order for the will of God to be done in your life. Let's go to our proof text, the book of Mark 10. Turn with me to the book of Mark 10 from verse 17. Are you there? Let's read together what happened. When the rich young ruler encountered Jesus Christ and asked him a question, but he was not ready for the response. Are you with me? The book of Mark 10, from verse 17. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one has, who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields along with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Many of us, like the rich young man, walk away sad from our, from our encounter with Jesus Christ. Because we're not truly ready to give up our own will and our own desire. 
We're forgetting the words of Jesus in that book of Luke 9 verse 23. What did Jesus say? If you want to follow me, take up your cross. Deny yourself and follow me. Is that not what Jesus said? But today we like to read the Bible to suit our own philosophy of life. We pick bits and pieces from the scripture. Many today, like you are, come to the house of God, but after the service, walk away sad. Why? Because they're not ready to refuse the powers that cause them to be bowed down in bondage. They're not ready to say no to what they want, when they want it, because they want it, and give in to the will of God. Many hear the word of God. Many even see the power of God, but they walk away sad because they're not ready to change. For the rich young man, it was his wealth that was so difficult for him to part with. And ultimately, it became his God. My brother, my sister, you're here in the arena of liberty this morning. Viewers all over the world, you're watching Emmanuel TV this morning. What are you still holding on to that you've not surrendered to the will of God? It's not worth it. Is it your pain? Is it your sickness? Is it your trouble? Is it your weakness? Is it your negative confession? Is it your emotional life? Is it your pride? Is it the pain of the past? Everyone hurts somewhere. Do you know that? Everyone hurts somewhere. And everyone has areas of their life that they don't want people to see or know about. But Jesus is the owner of your heart. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the owner of my heart. Do you know that many of us are here today and what we're asking God for is what we had in the past? Do you know that? Every day we are getting older, yet we keep asking God for the same things because we've not truly decided in our heart to follow Jesus. Is it good health you're asking for? You had it yesterday. Is it peace of heart you're asking for? You had it yesterday. What are you holding on to that you cannot surrender to the will of God? My father and the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua said, when I decided to follow Jesus, I meant it with all my heart. If I didn't mean it, someone somewhere will be telling you a history today about a church called Synagogue Church of All Nations. Do you really mean it? Ask yourself, do I really mean it? trading your inheritance with ask Esau he will tell you that it's not worth it he traded his birthright for a plate of food and regretted it the rest of his life you see my brother and sister Jesus is more concerned about your tomorrow than your today do you know that he's more concerned about your tomorrow than today he's more concerned about your future glory than your present comfort so why can't you just decide to say no to what you want now and enjoy eternity with God? If you keep trying to combine your will with God's will, you can never be content. You can never receive the promise of God for you. Many of us are here this morning praying for a change in our lives. Many of us are praying for a breakthrough in our lives. Many of us have given up that we can never conquer that bad habit. We can never overcome that weakness. We can never change. People of God, I want to tell you, that change is coming to your life today. That change is coming to your life today. Do you believe that? It will come when you want what God wants for the reason God wants it. Are you ready to want what God wants? <laughs> Do you know it's not the easiest way? Let's turn our Bible to the book of, Ma of Matthew 13. Let's see what Jesus said about this way that he's calling us to follow. Sorry, Matthew 7, the book of Matthew 7, verse 13. Are you there? Matthew 7. 
from verse 13. Jesus says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Do you know the path to heaven is not far from you? Let me see your Bible. The path to heaven is right in front of you in the Word of God. But it's not the easiest way to take. It's not the most comfortable way to take. It's, it's not the safest way to take. Many people, when asked why they commit the wrong they do, they tell you, it feels natural. It feels right. It feels good. Jesus desires to heal our wounds. He desires to change our story. He desires to solve our problem. But we don't often allow him to do so because it's not the easiest way to take. It's the path of humility and self-denial. Are you ready to take that path? Today is the day of decision. Many of us have been holding parts of our lives back from God. Right now it's time for you to let go of your desire, your will, because that is the only way you can exercise faith. Remember, faith is not by force. Anything that comes by force is not faith. You have to let go of your own will. Because people of God, where God wants you to go and where you want to go are often totally opposite. So in order for you to go where God wants you to go, you have to be under his influence. You have to be under his influence. The Bible says in James 1 verse 14 that we are tempted by our own desires. Don't ever say that God is tempting you. No. You are tempted by your own desires. Look at Joseph. In Potiphar's house, he was faced with a test of his will, but he chose the will of God. What about Jonah? Jonah ran away from God's will until he found himself in the belly of a huge fish and realized that he had to surrender to the will of God. Lot's wife, her desire for her past life, made her look back and cost her her life. What about David and Samson? Their desire for women caused a great setback in their relationship with God. Many of us, on the outside, we have stopped our bad habits. But if you talk to yourself heart to heart this morning, you will agree with me that one of the biggest challenges believers are facing, are struggling with, are hiding, is the problem of urge behind closed doors. Now what does that urge mean? To do what is contrary to the will of God. Where you look is not where your heart looks. And remember, your heart is what is driving you. Naturally, what you want is not stable. It is only when your heart is grounded in the word of God that you can be steady, walk steady, and remain steady in an unsteady world. Remember when Jesus taught us how to pray, what did he say? Our Father, who art in heaven. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For God's will to be done on earth, you first have to let go of your own will. You first have to let go of your own desire. When you do that, you will discover that change will come to your life. It's like when you sleep. When you sleep, do you remember your pain? I can't hear you. Do you remember your sickness? Do you remember your trouble? You see, when you sleep, your sickness sleeps. When you sleep, your pain sleeps. In the same way, you have to forget yourself to follow Jesus. That's the only way that you can follow Jesus. You have to forget yourself. Because if you remember yourself, you're serving two masters. Tell your neighbor, forget yourself. 
can't hear you. Forget yourself. Can I have two ushers, please? Let's just have, okay, can you come? Yes, thank you. Can you come? Thank you. You know, the reason why I call ushers to come forward is because every time you see them catching people, yes? I'm sure many of you go uh, think, how can they catch someone like that? Maybe their head's about to touch the floor and they just catch them. You see, letting go of your desire and your will is not easy. It's not comfortable. So, let's come forward. Now, who's the best catcher out of you? Who's the best catcher? He's the best catcher. Okay, we've heard from you. So, I want you to turn around. Now, just fall. Look, catch him at the last minute. Allow him to almost touch the ground. Are we ready for this? No, 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 you have to move further back, yes. Okay, now imagine you are, th this is you, and you're holding on, hold on to something. Just pretend there's something you're holding on to. And you, c you can't let go of this thing. You don't want to let go. Now tell him, let go. Let go. He can't hear you. Can you hear them? Yes, yes. Okay, say it louder, let go. Let go. Okay. No, you have... He's not letting go. No, 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 no. This is not the let go we're talking about. You know, many of us, this is what we do. We try and give little bits and pieces to God. I give my problem. Then I give my sickness. Then I give my emotional life. Then I give my bad habits. Then I give my pride. Tell your neighbor, give everything. Today, give everything. Because this is the day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. Give everything to God. What are you waiting for? Don't deceive yourself. What you think you want will not satisfy you. What you think you want cannot give you what you're looking for. Tell your neighbor, let go. Are you ready to let go? In, in one, you have to go straight. Are you ready? Okay, let's tell him, let go. Let's clap for them. Thank you very much. Can you see the picture of your life? Can you see why you have not received the answer to your prayer? Can I ask you a question? Are you a father? Just, are you a father? Yes, please. Okay, now imagine your child. Would you give your child a knife? Let's say a two-year-old son. Would you give him a knife to play with because he wants it? No, sir. Why would you, why, why, why would you not do that? Because he may cut himself. He may cut himself. You see, thank you, sir. L let me take your Bible. Now, this is us today. Now, I'm God, and this is you. Now, you're saying, give me this. Say, give me this. Give me this. Now, this thing is this Bible, okay? Now, you think that this is God's will for you. You think that this will bless you. You think that this is what you need at this time for you to move forward in your spiritual life with God. You think that this is what you need. T uh, tell me again. Give me this. Give me this. Now, I'm God. Am I answering her? Now, say it again. Give me this. Louder. Give me this. Louder. Give me this. Now, eventually, you'll get tired. You'll think that God does not hear you. You think that you do not have faith. You think that God does not love you. You see, if I know that if I give this to you now, it will take your salvation from you, will I give you? No. I can't hear you. No. I will not give you. And yet we continue to complain and say that we don't have faith. God doesn't answer my prayer. God doesn't love me. You see, God is our merciful Father. You have to know God as children know their Father. Tell your neighbor, God is my merciful Father. He will not necessarily give me what I want. I can't hear you. He will not necessarily give me what I want. He will give me what I need. Let's clap for Jesus Christ.
you may be thinking that this is what I want from God. Remember, God can see where you're going and He's more concerned about your tomorrow than your today. He's more concerned about your future. So don't walk away from Jesus. Do you know the greatest mistake that the rich young man made was to walk away from God? He walked away sad because he could not give up what was so precious to him. What is it you're holding on to? Remember, when you leave this world, will you take anything with you? Will you take anything with you? Naked you come into the world and naked you will depart. Whatever you acquire in this market, on this journey through life, when you are face to face with Jesus Christ, you will not have it with you. Tell your neighbor, let go. Let go. When you let go of your desire and your will, that means you can take up the will of God. This means your prayer needs to change. Stop praying for God to bless you. Stop praying for God to heal you, to restore you. And start praying for His will to overtake your desire. This is my desire. Let's stand up. To honor you. to overtake you. be your prayer. Lord, have your way in me. I can't hear you. Lord, have your way in me. Remember, your way is most times opposite to God's way. Acts of faith are but acts of self-surrender. Putting a stop, an absolute stop to your own way, your own work, your own reason, your own idea, your own project, and to rest in God's love, wisdom, and power. Are you ready to rest in God's love, wisdom, and power? That means your heart needs to be grounded in the Word of God. Because it's the direction of your heart that's driving you. And where your heart looks is many times not what you want to look at. What your heart says is not what you want to say. And what your heart is listening to is not what you want to hear. Apostle Paul said it all when he said, What I want to do, I don't do. And that what I do, I don't want to do. People of God, there's a way out for you. There's a way out for you. You just need to let go of your desire and will. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 26, My son, give me your heart and let my eyes observe your ways. 
when Jesus said in the book of Luke 9 verse 23, take up your cross and follow me, he meant let go of your will, let go of your desire and take up the will of God. It's not a question of combining your way with God's way. Your will with God's will. But a total and complete removal of your own will in order to put on God's will. You see, how do we know the will of God? Many people say, how do I know God's will for me? We know God by the word he speaks. And the word he speaks represents his heart's desire. You need to be grounded in the word of God. How can you let go of your own will and put on God's will? Tell your neighbor, I have a friend. I can't hear you, I have a friend. The Holy Spirit defeated fear for me right now let's declare this together I have a friend the Holy Spirit who has defeated condemnation for me who has defeated failure for me yes the Holy Spirit the helper he will not choose for you but he will strengthen your mind to choose the will of God in your moment of decision, in your moment of temptation, in your moment of difficulty, of trial, the Holy Spirit will remind you of the Word of God. But remember, you have to be grounded in the Word. Otherwise, there'll be nothing for the Holy Spirit to remind you of. So right now, begin to fill your heart with God's promise. Because that is what makes your faith real. Let's declare His promise for your life. Let's declare together. I'm justified. I'm no longer condemned. Defeat and failure are things of the past. I'm linked up with God. Jesus is my Savior. My Redeemer. My Deliverer. It is a new dawn. Good morning. Nothing will take you from this promise. This promise will continue to run in your heart. This promise will continue to run in your spirit. Say this prayer with me. Oh Holy Spirit, take more of me. Give me more of you. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will 